songs like that would play all over the house. We'd pull out our LPs and we'd listen to the Carpenters Christmas and we'd listen to Sinatra and Ann Murray. Do you remember Ann Murray? <laughs> Streisand. That's the one Mama would play the most. And so back in those days, I'm telling you, I just I fell in love with Streisand, but I loved country music too. And to be honest, I would be at Coldwater Elementary School, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and I might be singing Forever and Ever Amen, or I might be singing People. I got beat up a lot. <laughs> but those songs help kind of mold a lot of my memories, and so I still love singing them and listening to them. Uh, thank you for letting me do that. My favorite Christmas memory, of course, is going to be Christmas morning. We did that a little different. You know, Santa came every year, of course, and so we would wake up. One day a year, we would wake up around 5 in the morning. Every other time, you'd have to beat us to get us awake. But Christmas morning, we were up at 5 in the morning, and Gidget would usually wake us up, and then she'd go get mom and daddy up and we would sit at the top of the steps okay and daddy would read from Luke chapter 2 he'd read the Christmas story now let me say this also this was also the one morning a year where daddy would take about an hour to get ready and I know he did it just to make us mad but he would sit there at the top of the stairs and he'd read from Luke chapter 2 and then we'd all walk down the stairs together. No one could see what Santa had brought before anyone else could see it. We all walked down together, right? Now, this was so serious that the first year Gidget was married, she had to come to the house and walk in the back door, come up the steps and get us, and then go back down the steps. That's how serious we were about keeping the gifts a, a secret. So we'd come down the steps together and we'd turn the corner into the living room. So Chris, all of the presents that Santa brought would be on the love seat, right? And then all of Gidget's would be on the sofa. And I was the middle child, so all of mine fit on the recliner. And so we would take turns one at a time, right? Opening the gifts. Every, we got to see what everybody gets. So opening gifts would take a couple of hours. Seriously, it would. It would take forever to get through the gifts. And then Daddy, the one time a year, would cook the biggest breakfast you've ever seen. He'd cook eggs and grits and bacon and sausage and just everything you could think of. And we'd all eat breakfast, and um, a Christmas story would be playing on the television, of course. And then one of us, at some point, would remember that there are stockings. Because you always forget, because you're so overwhelmed by the presents. And we'd open the stockings, and then the grandparents would come over to the house, and we'd show them what all we got. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful day full of all of these great memories and it really wasn't until I was in the sixth seventh grade really that I had met a few people who didn't celebrate Christmas this was not a part of their tradition I couldn't fathom that I mean it was a huge part of our year so for me I just I couldn't understand it and I'd, I'd realize some of them just have uh, religious convictions that don't allow them to do that some of them just simply didn't care enough to go to that much trouble. And so I would feel bad talking about all of these gifts and Santa. And, I mean, how do I explain that now? Because there's some people who say, well, you've just made it too commercial. You've taken the, the reason for the season out is what you've done. And so this is what I would always hear growing up when a good old fashioned Baptist would try to explain why they do what they do at Christmas and they'd say well you know we give gifts because the wise men brought gifts and so we bring gifts have y'all heard that 
You know, the wise men brought gifts to Jesus, so we bring gifts, and that's a part of our tradition. And the more I read and study and learn over the last 22 years of my salvation, I just see it different now. You know, the wise men brought gifts because they were worshiping him. We want to worship him. Jesus deserved the gifts he got and much, much more than what he got. See, he deserved it. If I, if I look back on Christmas, I mean, even though mine fit on the recliner and Gidget's fit on the sofa, and I'm not bitter about that, I didn't deserve any of that. It's not like I had straight A's in school and so I get these gifts. It's not like I had done some type of incredible community service and so I get these gifts. No. These gifts were not a reward. They were just there. It was just given to me. That's different from what the, the wise men did. Jesus deserved those gifts. He was God. And so now, when I think of Christmas, I think of grace. I think of something that was unmerited, something that wasn't earned, something I could not work for. I just couldn't. And it brings me to this scripture. And I'm going to read along on the back wall while y'all read it up here. And we're going to stop just a little bit. And just for a couple of minutes, can we just look at grace? this Christmas season. Look at Ephesians 2. You were dead through the trespasses and sins which you once lived. So we're talking to believers, okay? Following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. Look at this. All of us once lived. That takes me to that verse that says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's not talked about a lot in churches. It's just not that popular, especially around Christmas. We try to keep everything happy and cheery, but it says there, all of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh, and senses and we were look at this by nature children of wrath I've heard it said you have to teach someone to be bad you have to teach a kid to to steal or or they have to learn that that's just not true by nature all of us are children of wrath like everyone else and that's something now, if you want to know two of the most powerful words in Scripture, to me, it's these next two words. But God. Isn't that great? I love it when the Scriptures have just what seems like an impossible thing to overcome. By nature, children of wrath, all of us have lived in this way towards our desires like everyone else. But now look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. You know this part. By grace you have been saved and this is the good news for the believer raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus I love this one for by grace you have been saved through faith this is not of your own doing. Here's the Christmas. It is the gift 
of God. That is unmerited. That gift comes undeserved. Why? It's not the result of works. So that no man may boast. For he, we're what he has made us, right? In Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. For good works. And the good works were prepared beforehand by God so that we can walk in them. When I think of Christmas, when I think of a living room filled with presents that came for absolutely no reason, I think of grace. Because that's what I received 22 years ago. I received grace. Not of anything that I did. It was impossible for me to do anything. I was dead, right? That's what that scripture says. I was dead and God made me alive. That, my friends, for me, is the message of Christmas. A message for the world. And so I would encourage you, as a believer, that's what we share this Christmas. We share grace. Do we share the songs? Absolutely. Do we share the gifts? Yes. The cards, the pictures that go in the refrigerators. Absolutely. Share all that. But don't miss this incredible opportunity to share about the greatest gift that was ever given unmerited favor the grace of God through his son Jesus Christ and if you're going into this season not knowing if you're going into this season not sure that's the Bible makes it very clear confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord Believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. The book of James says, unless you repent, you perish. So there's a turning from sin and turning to God, confessing him as Lord, believing he was raised from the dead, and you shall be saved.